Okay, let us get started. We're going to finish up module three, understanding by design. Understanding, understanding by design. Excuse me for the noise. I'm readjusting the microphone here. I get the merits for not having my equipment ready. Um, I've gotten a couple of uh, uh, emails and a text. And people are concerned about the fact that the uh, book that I have in here, the Google book, doesn't contain all the content from the, uh, the, the book, the printed book. And that is correct. Uh, you can't get the entire printed book. But also to point out that I made a mistake in the writing in the original assignment here. Uh, I had put in here after reading chapters three and five. There is no three and five, just it stops at four. So that's why I have, I've corrected that now to where it says after reading chapters three and four. What we're going to do tonight is I'm going to revisit Palatoons, show you the way that I would recommend you approach the assignment uh, because I think it's easier, frankly. And then we're going to open up the UBD template and we're going to take a look at it and I'm going to walk you through how to create. Now, do not take this the UBD assignment lightly um, because once you create this template for this particular assignment, you are more than welcome to use that in your final. It can be one of the five. Also, as I keep saying, the final, which basically is asking you to create a mini unit of five of these UBD templates, lesson plans, they can either be sequential. In other words, lesson one represents Monday, lesson five represents Friday, however you want to do it. Um, and or, or they can represent snapshots. In other words, this is what my lesson from uh, my unit about this would look like. Here's what my lesson about this would look like. Because if you see tonight, when we look at it, the UBD template has a place up here in the top where it says unit. So if you've got a unit that you want to use that has something to do with an aspect of chemistry, but you don't want to have to do one, two, three, four, five in sequence, you want to jump into a different unit of that study, that it's all fair game. Okay, it's all fair game. So let me um, let me dive back in the Palatoons after I made a total mess of it last week and you know i'll be honest with you guys uh i have to take this medicine called rhythmol um which is funny because i am now totally free of diabetes 2 hypertension all these other ailments i had before i lost weight and got back into shape but i'm still on this stupid rhythmol i call it my stupid pill because when i take it it literally makes my brain like sludge. And I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm just telling you, that's essentially what was going on last week. I was sitting here trying to work and fight the pill at the same time. I'm fine tonight. So I'm going to start with what it looks like. So here we are. We just landed on the Palatoons. The more I keep playing around with Palatoons, the more I like it, and I may have to end up getting a, uh, actually buy a subscription to it, because I really do like it, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So here's what I've decided to do. Now, for this free account, which is what we're working with, all you've got to do is go in and connect with one of these, okay? So I'm going to connect with my Googly account, because that's the one I'm most familiar with, and since I'm in Chrome, it automatically throws me in because Chrome remembers your passwords and your use, usernames if you use Google as your um, password and, and way you try to get in. Now, as you can see, it's landed me on the page. And what I want to do is 
I've got all these different things here that, that just drive you nuts. And that's fine, except I don't want to, it's not that I don't want to use one of the templates. Here, I'll show you. So here's the templates. And the templates are fine. Okay. If you want to go this route, this is very similar to like using pick the chart or anything like that. I find though that the folks at Powtoons make their stuff so, I don't know, complex is the right word or convoluted. I don't know. I'm going to go over here underneath the Powtoons hamburgers. Yes, that's what they call these things or pancakes, either one. And I'm going to click on blank Powtoon. Now, what happens now is I've got full control of how I want things to work and look. Uh, it looks, you know, very comfortably like a um, PowerPoint at this point on steroids. So the first thing I get to decide is which one of these styles I want to use. Well, you know what they're, they're about. So this style is that classic uh, whiteboard style where you see the hand come up on the screen. Well, it'll do that in Palatoons, but it also has the hand that comes up and moves things off the screen. Kind of interesting. I mean, you know, I, it's not that I'm knocking it. I'm just saying that it's interesting. Then here's the one where basically it has, um, I don't know if, if car, not cartoon. Um, I guess maybe it's more of a modern look, as they say. And then there's the one over here that I kind of like. It's the cartoon one. And then next to that is the infographic. In other words, if you wanted to make just a long infographic with the assignment, you can do it. And then we've got the reel. I would avoid the reel unless you've got a lot of material that you can put into play. So I'm going to go with the cartoon. And I'm going to increase my screen size here so we can see everything. Now let's jump back and look at what the assignment was all about. So Steve is asking you to understand and explain um, how you see the use of technology be embedded through the lenses of the facets of understanding in the UBD model. So develop a presentation using Powtoon, illustrating how each of the six facets of understanding would demonstrate meaning making and transfer by your students with technology embedded. Okay. So now that I kind of got that in my head, so he wants six facets of understanding. So what were those six facets of understanding? Extra points to anybody who can say them. Each one of those then would represent a slide. It's as simple as that. And what I'm trying to get you to do then is within that slide, you're going to show me after you have watched the videos, after you've read the chapter, remember I said this video um, right here is the one to watch. It really does a great job. So watching that, then you're going to be able to come back and you're going to take a look at the six facets of understanding. The other thing I told you to look at was this UBD binders because it really does a nice job of seeing everything. If we go look at that, you look up here and you go, oh, he's got it all laid out here for me. <laughs> so if you go up here and you look at acquisition tools and then you look at the things that you could use, wait a minute, those are the technology tools that we could use. There you go. Okay. So, you know, it's not like I'm throwing you into the water, okay? I'm giving you lots of resources here to play with. That's one of them. So, let's go look again. Here's our six facets. We have explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge. But, in our design here, those then become our starting places for how we're going to design our power tune. Power tune. Simple as that. So here I am, I'm at my beginning screen. And so when I look over here, it breaks this down into these nice sections. Look at this. So I have this one section called intros, one section called specifics, one section called image grids, one section called situations, 
one section called concepts, and then another one calls to action, and finally the outro. Now, the other thing I'm looking for here is remember, we're in a free account. So anything that says pro on it, I think what the pro does, and basically it doesn't let me, well, I think it puts a Powtoons on it. So let's go here and click on those. And now we get the choices of how our intros are going to look. So you see these, some of these have pro on them, so I'm not going to pick them. I'm just going to look for the ones that I can live with uh, that are not pro. And so I'm going to grab this one right here, and it shows up. Now it says Happy New Year. Well, maybe not. So we'll swap. So basically what it's letting me do, uh, I can either swap the whole thing, or I can come back here, and I can go back to my cartoons, and I can close this. Excuse me, I jumped the wrong place. I can close all this, and I can go back and pick something else. But you know what? I'm sitting, looking at stuff here that I kind of like. Hmm. Ooh, that's kind of neat. It actually moves. All right. So I swapped it. Now what I can do is I can come in here and I can start playing. And you'll notice over here, okay, that I it shows it. So I'm going to jump up here. I'm going to use the tools that I already know how to use. In other words, my um, text tools. And if I want to change the size of things, like so far, it looks like I'm 130, 130. And then down here, it looks like I'm 190. So I'm going to go ahead and make that smaller so it all fits. And I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to add the word of in there. And I'll come back down here, and I'll click on it again. I've got to go down to 130. We'll do that. And obviously in here, I can change the opacity. I can change the font. I can make it bold. I can underline it. I can change uh, how it shows up, if it's centered on the screen, so on, so on. So here we go. Here we are. So now I've got that down to a size that I like. I don't know what that's doing in the background, but I'm just going to click on it and it goes away. So let's go ahead and fix this. And now I can put in understanding. Okay. Got a problem. My box is too small. Not a problem. All I've got to do is click on the box, click off the box, click on the box, find where it I can stretch it out so that it's bigger. And that looks like it's going to stretch all the way across this page. So I might want to think about making it smaller. I think I will. Now, notice, of course, I don't want the champagne glasses. So we're going to get rid of those. And we're going to get rid of the bucket. Okay, now we've got a nice clean look here. Looks like it isn't going to fit. So I will go in, or I could change the font, but let's just go ahead and try just changing the size. This time I'll hold it down. Okay. Now let's try sliding that in. Here we go. Okay, so I've got that. So I've got a way now of that I've created that I own. Now the next step I can do is if I want to keep this, I can just duplicate the slide. And so now I've got a beginning slide that looks like this. The second slide is what I just created. So I can now go in here and I can start putting in my ideas. And those can look like uh, just words if you want to go that route. You know, if you're not up to playing here, 
I won't have them with that. So maybe this one would be empathy. Okay. And now that I've got that set up, I can right click on that one and I can duplicate that slide. Whoops. My empathy needs to be stretched as well. Okay. There we go. And over here is where all my tools are. So if I want to add a text box, if I want to add body text, okay, there we are. There's my body text for that. And now I can write in there. I don't know why it keeps popping these other things in here. So I have the ability to now decide how big or how much writing I want to put in here. Obviously, I think I want to change this color. So I'll come in here and I'll go over here and I'll make it white. And I'll move this around and I'm going to make it bigger. I'll do the same thing here. I did on the other page. Okay. You get it? Then if I come down here, I can click on this and it will show me how it plays. Simple as that. Simple as that. And so what I would do then is I need to get rid of that. I don't know why I ended up uh, duplicating a slide like that. Okay, so there's my title slide. There's my, oh, look, it does that. You know what? I'm going to leave that. I could get rid of it, but I like that firework kind of look. So I'm going to come over here, and there's my first slide where I talk about what it means. And I'll make another one, another one, another one, another one. Now, where do we do, how do we do the technology bit? We wonder, well, let's go look at props. And if I go into the tech side, let's see if there's any. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of props in here for me to use. So I could drag over a little computer. I didn't mean to do that. Thank you very much. And I'll slide him around. And, you know, I might put him down over here. And then underneath here is where I can add another text. So I have the body of text. I'm going to bring it down here. Um, now I know I need to change that color, so I'll do that right away so I don't end up messing around. And also, I know that eh, I might want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll go ahead and do that right away. Now, down here is where I can Move things around again so it all fits. 
There you go. That's all I was looking for. Don't need anything any more fancy than this. Um, you know, this, this this kind of offends me a little bit, so I might go in here and take a look at it and see what it looks like when I move it over. Eh, I think I'll just leave it the way it was. Okay. Now, the big question is, what do you do with it when you got it done? So you go up here to preview and export. And then when it says, is your Powtoons ready? You say export. And this is, you can create your own personal page. We really don't need that. And this is where I was running into problems uh, last week. And so we can either do it as a PDF, you can do it as a PowerPoint, or you can do it as an MP4, but eh, I think that's a little too much, too much. So what I noticed was that if I just took the URL of this, in other words, what I was sitting here watching. Oh, notice down here, you can do it as a slideshow. So you don't have to make the movie, okay? It doesn't have to be a movie. Let's see if that changes the export up any. So if I export as a slideshow, nope, still wants to do it that way. All right, so what if I come in here, take that URL that I was just looking at, and I paste it in to my bar at the top. There you go. So it puts me in. So there's your answer. So we don't need to worry about any of this. All we need to do is go back here and copy out that URL that you created. Well, not the URL you created, but the URL of your presentation that you created and then throw it over uh, into our assignment. So let's go back and make sure that I've got that written the right way in the, in the assignment. Yeah. Okay. So you'll paste that in into the box. Simple as that. Okay. I think I acquitted myself a little bit. Um, you know, <laughs> I could I could have gone into okay. I got a blank slide here. I could go in here to specifics. I could go. You know, I haven't looked at the grid thing. Let's look at the grid thing. Well, we got it up here. Yikes. So if I put a grid thing in, oops, I don't want to replace the slide content. No, 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 no. I want to use this slide. Thank you. And you can, sh you know, shove them around, by the way. So, okay, so here's my blank slide. What happens if I put a grid in there? Hmm. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know if that does anything for me or not. Um... Let's see, specifics, what does it do? Yeah, now see, here's where things could get kind of interesting. There you go. There you go. You could do the whole thing on one slide right here. So as you can see, all this you can take out. All this you can take. I can add my title right here. Well, well the first thing I need to do, obviously, is to get six on the screen, right? So I'd have to move him out or just get rid of him, you know, either way. So if I got rid of this little guy right here and I get rid of the little heart right here, I might keep this box and I slide it over there. I'll keep the add title. I'll add the short description box. I'll keep all of this right here. And what I'll do is it won't let me gather them together, I don't think. So let's see what happens if I do a copy of that and I do a paste of that. Look at that. So now I've got my other box. I've got my clean box. So what I could do is I could get rid of everything that's on the screen here except for that one box that I just created. 
You with me? I don't have to get any fancier than this. And then I can just slide this. I can copy and pa paste this in and just fill it in. Now I'll have to add my title. I'll have to add my description. I'll have to do all that. But again, I've got my sample right up here. So I just go up there and I'll do a copy and I'll paste. And I'll do the same thing here. You know, it's, it's, it's not hard. You won't have any trouble with this, I don't think. Just don't think you've got to, you know, go crazy with it. Um, that would be for the class on multimedia, you know, going crazy with Powtoons. We're not going crazy with this, okay? You get what I'm doing here. I'm just building the screen. And then when it's all done, I'm just going to copy this URL up here. And that's then what I'll put over in to my assignment page. Now, to the assignment page, let's take a look at what we're doing. On the assignment page, it has this template right here. Uh, and I'm not going to go ahead and click it, download it, and all that. You know how to do that. And if I do on this machine, it's going to come up and it's going to want me to sit and wait while it does some updates because every time I log in, I have to start all over again, blah, 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 blah. So I've already done all that. It's down here in the tray. So let's bring it up. Now we can go to work. This is the template that you will use for your lesson planning. Simple as that. Up here, just put your name and you know, lesson number one, unit title. What you're going to put in there is whatever you're focused on here. And let's see, reading comprehension. Okay. Establish goals. At this point, what I want you to realize is and, and this is what's so ironic about um, understanding by design. As I've told you before, understanding by design is a building block of so many curriculum designs that are out there. I told you that Danielson, um, if, you, if you peer down through Danielson and strip away the layers, understanding by design is at the root of it all. And so it's so ironic that the guys, when they created this, and if you remember when we watched the video from Grant, from Wiggins, he was talking about the textbook is not the curriculum. The textbook is not the curriculum. And he went on to talk about the kids aren't in charge of the curriculum and all that. But what's so ironic was they, they meeting Wiggins and McTeague, they were seeing this as teacher driven. They were kind of later in, in their discussions and their writings, they came to recognize the um, taking away of the curriculum from teachers and realizing that curriculum now was being set by central office, states, so on and so on. Having said all that, what I'm trying to say to you, use it. At some at this point, a lot of this is cut and paste, copy and paste. So what I want you to do is use the documents you have at hand to basically go in and find the established goals are the goals that are outlined within whatever document you use. In our case, it would be KDE. So you're going to basically go in and just find it, match it up with what your unit is about, paste it in here. When you get down here, the students will understand that. Now, this is where you start coming back in. Essential questions. A lot of stuff that's out there now has the essential questions built into it. I, I think about the curriculum guide that JCPS puts out. Use it. Use it. Copy and paste. Well, Steve, what am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> okay. So what you're doing here 
is you're looking at where technology might fit in these two, or excuse me, three boxes. Students will understand that. Students will know what? Students will be able to. And remember, this is the piece where he talks about when he talks about understanding. This is the piece where he talks about transfer. Okay? Nowhere in here do you see the facets of understanding. They don't put a box in here for facets of understanding. Let me repeat. You may underline, 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 use technology in these three boxes. You don't have to. Then you come down here. Assessment evidence. Now we're talking about six facets of understanding, and now we're really talking about technology. Okay. Given should be red, excuse me. Okay. Do you need other evidence? Sure. Remember, that's what you talked about. The evidence can be The other evidence can be quiz. Now let's let's make sure we understand what he, what Steve means by quiz here. Formative quiz housed in Google Classroom. Okay, ma'am. Key criteria. At this point, you're sitting at home at Hope, and you're going, that's it, that's it, yep, that's it, that's it. Okay. The guys I have seen, I cannot tell you, um, I have seen... Uh, like in uh, YouTube, I've seen so many videos where people come in and they do these things, and it's a it's a book. In other words, they go in, they say, "Hello, I am so and so from Central Office in such and such school district. I'm going to show you how to do the Wiggins and McTeague template." Okay, and then it's a book. I am here to tell you, I sat in the same room with Grant Wiggins. I did this template in the same room with Grant Wiggins. And his point was, he said, do not equate quantity of words with quality of words. Get to the point, make it clear what you want. Now, I'll, I will, you know, stand convicted of under my key criteria down here. Students will identify the main idea. Maybe I ought to put in a percentage there. You know, it depends upon if, if the whole book, if I'm asking them to do stuff from the whole book or just a section of the book, a selection from the book, you know. But you see where I'm going. And then a summary of the learning activities. So what I'm hoping we can do here Now, 
if I were doing this as a mini unit sequentially, this is my first lesson because what I'm going to identify is that I'm dealing with people who have trouble. Okay. Now, I'm doing stuff here out of my head, but again, as I said, these kind of understandings are coming right out of the curriculum. Um, and essential, the essential questions. We always struggled when we were teaching teachers of Wiggins and McTeague understanding by design. This is a million years ago with essential questions. It was so hard for teachers to understand that. And if you look in that chapter where he talks about essential questions, you know, an essential question gets at the heart of what it is you're trying to get kids to do. Excuse me. It is not a question that can be answered simply. Yes or no, A, B, or C, one, two, or three. It is, is it an essential question that leads kids on? Okay. We used to struggle with this. I'm telling you, I'm giving you the permission. Steve gave you the get out of jail card. Use what's there in the curriculum. Okay? It's hard. It's hard. Essential questions are hard. And so right now, I've kind of painted myself into a corner. If I had to come up with an essential question for this, How do pictures and words help in understanding the world around us? Okay. Remember that transfer. You always got to get that transfer in here. Where's my transfer? Down here where it says students will listen to a book read to them in an online book presentation, identify the main idea. So it's the whole the whole bit about once they get this concept of that words and pictures taken together or keywords help you understand comprehension wise what you're reading. That's it. And then of course what I'll do is I'll save this document and then I will upload it to my assignment in the module. So let me go ahead. I'm going to jump back into us. Okay, so I'll go here, and now down here where it says to write the submission is where I will put my, let's see if, it, if it's stuck. You know what's interesting? Have you seen this? I'm sure somebody has. I'm surprised Heather or Paige hasn't written me about it. Look what they don't do. Let me go ahead and drop that in here, and let's see if we can make it light up. Okay, so it comes in all underlined and everything like it should to indicate that it is a um, link. But if it doesn't, in other words, if it doesn't hold on to the link, because I'm looking up here and I don't see that the two uh, insert link and break link, that these don't uh, light up. So if it doesn't, I'm not going to worry. You're not going to worry about it because you know what Steve will do. Steve will just do that. And then he'll right click on it 
and he'll either open it up or he'll put it in, which it looks like what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to have to copy it. And then I will go give myself a new tab and I will paste it in and then I'll tell it to go open it. Okay. So that should work just fine. So don't freak out if it does that to you. Let's jump back into here. And then, of course, here is where you'll go and browse and find that template that we just did. And you upload it into the assignment. That's it. We have now done understanding, understanding by design. Next week will be the last one that we do. In other words, something that actually has something we have to learn. And that will be universal design for learning. Um, of all the stuff that we've done in this class, understanding by design has a very special place in my head because I actually got to sit in a room with the band who came, came up with it. But it also just made sense. It just made perfect sense to me. Universal design for learning comes from my heart. This is something that I am so firmly imbued with. The idea that every child can learn, that it is not the child that is broken, it is the curriculum that is broken. And that if we just allow for multiple pathways into the curriculum, in other words, just because a kid can't fill in the blank, is there another way? Is there another way to show understanding? I could tell you an example after example, and I probably will next week, but it's just one of those things where it just makes sense. Now, for us, I'm going to just use a very simple, straightforward tool called Edpuzzle. Um, and, I, and I don't want to say that Edpuzzle is the answer to universal design for learning. Boy, they sure like it to be. <laughs> I get uh, email every week. I get an email from, from uh, the Edpuzzle people saying, look at what we've done with universal design for learning now. And it's good stuff. But I believe that it's more a philosophical if you truly believe that everyone can learn and that then puts the onus on us to come up with the way for them who have success in learning, then I think we can expect everyone from being able to participate at some level in the curriculum. And as the person who is K-tip, I don't want to know, I don't want to think about how many Teachers I have K-tipped over the years who have worked with moderately and severely uh, disabled children. Uh, FMD, functional mentally disabled. Unfortunately, here at UofL, it's called MSD. I hate that term. But because it also stands for Metropolitan Sewer District. But the thing that I think that I've seen is people who go into this with an open attitude, open mind, an understanding of universal design for learning, it then becomes that magic almost. Eh, it's not magic. It's, it's just good planning and good. How could I help this kid understand what it is the curriculum is asking them to do? Okay. So that'll be our last sort of, you know, Steve's got to talk at you and we do. And then your hat is nothing more than downloading this understanding by design template and then uh, filling it in and uploading it back in. It was a quick, uh, quick class tonight, but actually it was a culmination of a whole lot of classes we've had now with understanding by design. Uh, I hope I've cleared up the problem that was in the assignment about the book, and I apologize for that. As I said, should have been chapters three and four, not chapters three and five. So I apologize for that. Um, and I think I hopefully have brought down the stress level on the Powtoons that, you know, we're not looking for anything fancy dancy. This is not a, as I said, multimedia class. That's 690. So 
if you have any issues, if you have any questions, concerns, if you want to get back together, in other words, if you need to actually come into this environment, into the collaborate, and actually have a one-on-one -on -one with Steve on the other side of the screen yelling at him, asking him questions, you go right ahead and just send me that text and say, can we get together Thursdays and Fridays are wide open. Uh, Wednesdays, I have to teach the 201 classes. So Thursdays and Fridays are wide open. If you want to get together and go over anything we've had up till now, and you know how to do that. 502-457-2937. I'm always here for you, always available. Thank you, as always.